I'm thinking about kind of um, the, the one of the natural extensions of something that you just alluded to, which is like characteristically, if we are going to be hiring and doing it so effectively with your resources, um, the note that I wrote here is that we have to hire people that really also understand that the heart and the wallet from a consumer standpoint are very much connected. We, we have to be looking for people also that understand that a rich customer centric empathetic experience is, is the product in lots of ways that our industry is selling right now, which is what I wanted to speak about. Um, you know, primarily there are three reasons why any of us buy anything. And, you know, let, let's just call it the whys of consumption. Um, you know, on a very basic level, we, we make buying decisions because of what I'll call use value, right? For example, I buy a pencil because I need to draw something. Um, occasionally, you know, we buy something based on what I'll call the exchange value, you know, which is what a product costs, 50 cents. Um, but what I really want to focus in on for my, for my presentation today is what I'll call sign value. And you know, sign value is what a product, or in this case, a buying experience says about me, and most importantly, how it makes me feel. And I, 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 I wanna focus on this particular uh, value modality because in our industry, as we all know, products and services have become largely indistinguishable from one another. And when that becomes the case, then the sign value or the emotional gratification, the customer experience becomes um, a real advantage for a company. So if you're listening to this right now and you're a contractor, a business owner, a salesperson, um, I wanted just to point out five aspects, and there's many more, these are just five, uh, that contribute to a great retail experience. And that's my phone. One, five, zero, five, <laughs> Actually, eight, nine, one, <laughs> two, nine, six, seven. Hey, my blood pressure medicine's ready. Uh, <laughs> people don't buy a two-inch drill bit, they buy a two-inch hole. When someone works with your company, obviously they can buy a heating and cooling system virtually anywhere. Um, but there is something above that, which is to say, and this is the challenge question I'd like to ask is, if people work with your company, what is the emotional output that you're trying to create? What is the what, how do you want them to feel, essentially? Because they're not just buying the furnace, right? They're buying um, a certain sense of loss aversion. They're buying a sense of security. They're buying a sense of perhaps peace of mind. But one aspect of a great experience is that the product stands for something greater than just the product. If you drive a Tesla, it says something about who you are as a person, and that's why you'd make that investment. And although it seems like a stretch, the same is very much true in our industry. Great experiences leave nothing to chance. Again, if you're an owner listening to this right now, I would ask how many steps or components does your customer go through during the entire sales cycle from initial point of contact to exit? And the answer is lots. But the intriguing question, the design question, is how many of those are you managing toward a certain kind of experience? How much is left to chance? And I, you think about the majority of retail experiences that we all have, most of them are pretty average. Most of them do one or two things really well. But when you see something that is well managed from start to finish, it is remarkable and it does stand out. And guess what? Those typically have an easier time commanding a, a, a higher price. Great expectations, uh, great experiences set and meet expectations, which is to say communication is baked into the entire process. And we do a lot of that really well, calling a customer before an appointment, clarifying our new safety standards, those kinds of things. But if you peel this back a bit further, there are a myriad of opportunities to set and meet customer expectations, which is a form of reassurance and trust building. The famous Domino's emoji. Great experiences are effortless, right? Um, which is to say, Twitter used to be able to receive a pizza emoji and it would automatically start the pizza process. What is more effortless than sending a pizza emoji to Twitter and getting a pizza? 
The question I would ask the listeners is, how easy are we to do business with? And what are the points of contact that create a little bit too much friction between my business and our customers? And what can we do to reduce the friction? And you know, ultimately, great experiences are based on emotional output. And I love this from the great Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said, and people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And as we go forward, and as, as we deal with everything around us right now, the currency that we are trading in are the quality of the relationships that we are able to uh, create based on amazing business to consumer retail experiences. We are in an experience economy. And if we can start to have that conversation and think about designing what we do in the home uh, in lots of different ways, we will be in a much better position when those opportunities arise. So this is, discussion is part of a brand building seminar that I host. If you want to see some additional uh, collateral, you can email me. And week, uh, at the sales lab, we have a workbook for a download if you want to go check out what we've been doing in the sales lab. And it talks about structure. It talks about uh, just setting up a great sales call. I appreciate, as always, the opportunity, my contact information if you want to re reach out. And uh, thank you very, very much.